interesting. So I saw, like, this is one of my, the favorite documentaries that I watched, mm -hmm. but um, you probably watched it, The Social Dilemma. Yes. Um, like, when I saw that, like, it, it all made sense. And, like, that concept of how the algorithm and, like, how the apps are designed for people to keep coming back um, to it and how like they have a very good vi they had a very good vis visualization of everything like um, mm -hmm. they were following an example of a person and um, the like company like the people behind the scenes were like okay there's a model and they would study him and, like okay this person has not been on this uh, site yeah, for like yeah, yeah. so long what's happening let's send him a notification yeah yeah and then, yeah and like his phone pings and then he's back online and like it it, it really like made me think okay yeah, like this happens to me too like I see a notification and open it and um, the like the way that these apps are just designed is just ingenious and like it's kind of crazy how these algorithms work and how they're even able they're able to figure out the human psyche and one of the things that was mentioned in that documentary was that like these apps and technologies have evolved so fast but our brains are still primitive like yeah, we still yeah, yeah crave that um, external validation and we care about that number of likes or that comment and that just makes us keep coming back to it and how that is one of the reasons why so many people are feeling depressed even if they have like a maybe a thousand followers that doesn't matter but um, like the it has affected them in ways that is like permanent yeah I mean I, I had some issues with that movie but overall I'm glad that it increased awareness of right. what was happening um, I think there's several things that, like to tease apart what you said, like number one, I think it's so important that people are aware of the algorithms at play. Right. Um, and so awareness is something okay. that, um, you know, we did a study several years ago, um, and it turns out that in 2015, um, many people had no clue that Facebook was curating the posts that they saw on Facebook. They assumed that they saw every single post that their friends sent. Right. Um, in 2017, somebody replicated the study and found the same thing. Today, I would hope that people, you know, would know more. Mm -hmm. But awareness, awareness is critical, um, especially when, you know, you see people like, you know, I see five year olds using, you know, Netflix and YouTube. And I ask them, like, why is this thing at the top? And they're like, because it's better. Mm. Like, what makes it better? And they're like, it's just better. Um, this idea of, algorithmic intervention, like I think people should should know about it. I don't know if it means putting a stamp on something, but making people aware that they're not seeing everything or that there's some form of prioritization or even what values go into that prioritization, I think is key. Um, two things outside of that, I do think that um, tools need to give you some sense, some signal so you can create a mental model of what that tool is doing. Right. Because if you don't understand that, that becomes extremely difficult to use that tool as you move forward. Um, and so we've done, we've done some work around this area of mental models um, and how to help people form them. And what we found is that when people do create these mental models, um, they become engaged in a different way with the tool. They become engaged in a way where they feel that it benefits them more and improves their experience with it. Mm. Um, the other thing, just to address one of your points, um, so I, I also want to argue for contestability mm. towards algorithmic systems, where if an algorithm gives me an output, like I would love some levers or some buttons to be able to push back and say no. Um, either give me something else or you're wrong. Um, to start ha moving more towards like human algorithm interaction. Mm. Like I've talked about human computer interaction, community computing, um, but this idea of being able to push back um, because right now, like the power dynamic is there, right? it's very one-sided. I get what they give me. Um, every now and then you see an interface where you can say hide something, um, but it's just, it's cumbersome. Nobody ever does that. Mm. Nobody ever does that. And not only that, but like, let's say you're even bullied and you want to use the bullying interface. You never even get an acknowledgement that, you know, on this day at this time, you know, you put in a request for something to be done about this. And so this idea of, Contestability, I think, is key. Um, you mentioned one other point, and I just wanted to make sure I remembered my brain. I should be taking notes here. I'm sorry. <laughs> the notifications, maybe? Um, not notifications. What was the other thing? Um, people feel, it was about how people felt, I think. Um, about them feeling more like 
of like craving more external validation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think there, like, I, I feel that if people had, what's the right word? Um, no, not all life is online. Mm -hmm. I feel like if we had in schools, you know, you know, online, see, less interruptions, <laughs> um, also from like social media. Um, like, I think if people have good relationships with their families, I think if people have good relationships with their peers, um, you know, extending those into social media can be great. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, but this idea of relying on external validation, um, in, from so many places and that being your sole signal of approval, um, is troubling. So I, I do think it's important for people to be involved in multiple communities. So for example, let's say you have your school community, your family community, you're involved in clubs. Um, historically, um, that's been a good way to, um, improve your mental health because let's say something doesn't go so well in one community, you can fall back in a different community. Mm. But if you have mm. like one Twitter community um, and something doesn't go right there or one Instagram community um, and it's big, right? Um, and you don't get the likes that you think you want, um, that can be devastating. So where do you fall back to? Mm. So it's, it's important to have fallbacks, whether they be online or in person, but Having all of your identity and your self-worth based in one community has always been problematic. Mm. And so I think it is important to help people have face-to-face -face and online communities and not there be just one. Mm.